So we've been doing these approximations and we've talked about reducing the amount of operations on the pixels. How does it compare to a real lens blur? It's okay. Right? No, it, I mean, it's significantly better than a Gaussian, right? If you're going to render a game like this, this is the way to do it. There are other, there are other techniques. Sprite depth of field is a common one. Right? Um, I like this approach because I just think it's mathematically elegant, but, you know, fair enough. Um, but there are a few things at play that mean it's never going to be as good as a real lens, right? First of all, light doesn't do exactly what you think, right? So in this case, it's going through glass. The glass is moving things around. That is going to be lost a little bit in our, in our blur. Another thing is that our disk is not absolutely sharp, right? And we can't approximate hexagons with it, so you can't do that kind of blur. Um, but I think the main problem is that the exposure is very hard to get, right? If you, you've kindly given me an actual image of the same scene, but now you've opened up the aperture to get this blur, right? So this is my approximation, which I think looks pretty good, but it's not as good as yours, right? And that's because the lights, apart from the fact they're not perfectly circular, they, they're just brighter and more interesting. The reason, I think, is because when I'm taking the source image, it's already been clipped to 255, right? Not to 255. There is nothing in that image that really says how much brighter this light is than the background, right? In a lens, when you go, when you go out of focus, that really bright light source gets brightly spread out over everything, right? And looks really great. In this, I'm spreading one pixel of 255 out among a load of dull background, and it just disappears. Right? So I have to increase the exposure myself, and it looks okay, but it's never going to look, never going to pop quite as well, right? There's nothing I can do about that apart from to try and fake it. So what I did was I ramped up the kind of the sort of the gamma. I kind of skewed it so that the brighter pixels became even brighter, and then I undid that at the end, right? But it's an approximation, and it's going to look different for every image. The, the irony here is it was much more difficult to get everything in focus on this for the photo that I sent you to yeah. break up and put the blur on than it yeah. was to take the one. With the blur, yeah, yeah. I would very much recommend not. So this is, this is also what portrait modes and things do in phones. I mean, maybe this is a different video, right? But portrait modes in phones, there's lots of ways to do it, but one of the ways is just to work out where the background is and blur it with an approximate lens blur, right? You're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna get the wrong foreground, the wrong background. There's gonna be jarring bits between the two. The exposure's gonna be difficult to manage. I mean, you said yourself in Photoshop, if you do a lens blur, there's all kinds of different settings to do with exposure. And it's just about getting it to look as good as you can, right? In practice, get a better camera with a better lens and you'll always be happier for it.